The legal saga that is plaguing Sean Diddy Combs and his legacy has left many wondering what's next for the embattled rapper and producer. As federal investigators continue their probe into Diddy's shocking sex trafficking allegations, it's been nearly a month since authorities, many from Homeland Security, raided the rapper and producer's L.A. and Miami mansions. But since the now infamous raids, investigators have remained tight-lipped. And while at this time we don't know the extent of what investigators discovered, or even the details of the search warrant, or if the result of the raids or the federal investigation will bring about criminal charges, many legal experts have waited on the ongoing federal sex trafficking probe. And some experts consider the raid to be the tip of the iceberg, as many evidence obtained could be used by federal prosecutors if they're working to build their case against a hip hop mogul. Most people think of sex trafficking as, as happening in you know massage parlors or women being trafficked in from Brazil or from Thailand, which does certainly happen. American women are also trafficked. And in the federal statutes, the Anti-Trafficking Act and the federal statutes that are related to that, it really has more to do with just moving from state to state and committing some kind of illegal sexual act that involves some sort of prostitution. And so sex trafficking is a very broad definition in federal law. And I think it looks to me like they are really focused on the allegations we've seen in some of these civil suits from these women that they went from place to place with Diddy and he forced them to prostitute themselves to other men. But for a man who Forbes says has long been considered one of the wealthiest rappers of all time, with an estimated billion dollar net worth and seemingly an army of lawyers at his disposal, some legal experts say federal prosecutors have to take their shot and not miss if they plan to bring a criminal indictment against him. So what does it take to build a sex trafficking case against a powerful man like Diddy? According to former federal prosecutor Francie Hakes, the digital evidence reportedly seized by federal investigators is going to be crucial. I've heard some commentators, some former prosecutors say that a search warrant is one of the final things that happens in a criminal investigation, and I disagree with that completely. It could be. But it's not always that way. Sometimes a search warrant is because you develop probable cause, which can be information from one single credible witness that evidence is going to be found in the place they're going to search. One single credible witness. And without that evidence, there is no case. So I don't agree that it's, generally speaking, the last thing in any criminal prosecution, in any investigation. It could be one of the first things things. But the search warrants at his residences are really critically important. They most likely were taking things like digital evidence, phones, uh, computers, laptops, iPads. Those things may very well contain evidence of these crimes that they allege have been committed against them. And so that is a process exploiting that digital evidence that may weeks or months for the federal government to get through before deciding whether or not there is evidence of a crime beyond a reasonable doubt. Well, generally, you're going to have some forensic agents on the scene who may very well have taken kind of a preview look at some of this digital evidence. And depending on what they found, if they think they're going to find evidence through the full forensic exploration of these digital devices, they may, they may very well have started a grand jury investigation investigation. And federal grand juries sit every week for a day or two, depending on the busy jurisdiction. They sit and they hear evidence. They can subpoena evidence from banks, cell phone companies, um, hotels, all sorts of different providers to try to build the picture of the case. So it's not just, did this person commit a potentially sexual violent act, which is obviously part of the proof of the case, but how do you prove beyond that, that the person was in the place? Because generally, unless you've got photo or video evidence, it's just someone's word against someone else's. And so they want to be able to put the offender in the location where the victim says they were doing what they said they were doing. They were there for a concert. They were there for a meeting. They were there uh, you know, on some shopping trip. Whatever it is, the prosecutors are going to want to put the offenders in the location where the victim says. And so that's all the evidence that the grand jury can kind of gather during this investigation on their way to handing down a possible indictment. Federal prosecutors seemingly have a lot of allegations to work with. Diddy is facing a slew of sexual misconduct lawsuits. But the first that seemed to have opened the floodgates was the November 2023 federal lawsuit filed by Diddy's ex-girlfriend, actress and R&B singer Cassie Ventura. In Cassie's suit, she accused her ex-boyfriend of a decade of mental, physical, and sexual abuse. 
She alleged Diddy beat her repeatedly. In one claim, Cassie alleged Diddy beat her at a hotel. The security camera supposedly captured the incident, but Cassie alleges Diddy paid the hotel tens of thousands of dollars for the evidence of the tape. She said Diddy gave her a copious amount of drugs. And following instances of violence, according to the suit, Diddy would often hide Cassie in hotels for days to let her bruises heal. In the suit, she claimed Diddy would also traffic her by coercing her to have sex with male sex workers in different cities while he filmed and pleasured himself to the encounters. According to the court filing, Diddy and his employees would use the mogul's power and wealth to intimidate and silence her. The suit shocked many and even came with a trigger warning, but the suit was settled for an undisclosed amount just a day after it was filed in federal court. At the time, an attorney for Diddy called the allegations offensive and outrageous. But after the suit was settled, Diddy's lawyer said it was settled amicably and the decision to settle was in no way an admission of wrongdoing. But since Cassie's lawsuit, more legal trouble came to follow with similar allegations from other women. Joy Dickerson Neal filed a lawsuit in New York Supreme Court against Diddy. She accused Diddy of drugging and sexually assaulting her in 91. She alleged she was a victim of revenge porn, saying he filmed the assault and showed it to others. Liza Gardner sued Diddy and R&B singer Aaron Hall on allegations of battery and sexual assault, stemming from an incident in 1990 when she was just 16 years old. Gardner alleged Diddy and Hall gave her alcoholic drinks, pinned her down, and forced her to have sex. An anonymous woman using the moniker Jane Doe filed a federal suit against Diddy, music producer Harve Pierre, and an unnamed third assailant in December. Doe accused the three of sex trafficking and gang rape in 2003 when she was just a 17-year-old high schooler. And then there's the latest suit, when music producer and videographer Rodney Jones, aka Lil Rod, filed a federal lawsuit against Diddy and a number of other defendants, including actor Cuba Gooding Jr. Jones' suit accuses Diddy of racketeering, sexual assault, and sex trafficking in 2022 and 2023 when Jones worked on Diddy's most recent album. Through an attorney, Diddy has vehemently denied all the allegations made against him. The only time he spoke out on the allegations was in December in a post made to his social media. The statement read, For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation, and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. Those also named in the sexual misconduct suits have denied their involvement. Harve Pierre released a statement after being accused of gang rape. He said, this is a tale of fiction. I have never participated in, witnessed, nor heard of anything like this ever. These disgusting allegations are false and a desperate attempt for financial gain. I will vigorously protect my reputation and defend my name. Those who know me recognize that these claims are not true. And at this time, Aaron Hall has not commented on the allegations against him. So could the slew of sexual misconduct lawsuits be used against Diddy if prosecutors choose to file charges against the hitmaker? Hake says it's possible. In federal court, they have something called 404B evidence, which is also known as similar transaction evidence. And so if there is prior conduct that's uncharged because maybe it's outside the jurisdiction or outside the statute of limitations, but the conduct is similar enough in nature that it resembles the conduct that's charged, then that prior conduct or outside conduct can be used as evidence against the offender. So these other women who have come forward in these other civil suits could very well be called to testify as to what was alleged to have happened to them by Diddy or others in any kind of conspiracy or RICO case. They may very well testify to what happened to them so that the jury can be more informed about whether or not there's a likelihood that if they did this in the past and it's similar enough, then they're more likely to have committed the conduct that's in the indictment. In addition to names like Aaron Hall and Harve Pierre being named in Diddy's lawsuits as defendants, other celebs and famous faces were also named, most notably in Rodney Jones's lawsuit where he named three women as Diddy's alleged sex workers. In Jones's amended complaint, he specifically named City Girls rapper Young Miami, Instagram model Jade Ramey, and OnlyFans model and actress Daphne Joy as Diddy's sex workers who received monthly stipends. All three have denied the allegations. Daphne Joy has denied involvement in the sex worker allegations, posting this to Instagram. She writes, I am deeply hurt by the lies in Rodney Jones's lawsuit. The claim that I am a sex worker is 100% false and character assassination. I'm retaining an attorney to explore all legal remedies against both Rodney and his attorney. Jade Ramey issued a statement saying, yes, I dated someone. Dating someone doesn't directly correlate to any of the false allegations made. 
and rapper Young Miami in response to a dig by Diddy's rival 50 Cent responded by saying, I'm not a prostitute. I never sold cat emoji a day in my life. I hate how this is getting spun. But what could the ongoing sex trafficking probe mean for those named as the rapper and producer's alleged sex workers? As Higgs explains, investigators are looking for momentum to potentially build a RICO case against Diddy. Well, it seems to me that, that what the feds are looking at here, what the FBI is looking at, is some kind of conspiracy case. It could be a RICO case, which just means some sense of an organization that's committed a couple of different felonies kind of all working together, right? That's all RICO is. It's, it's not that complicated. But what it means is this could be a very complicated pattern with a lot of potential witnesses, whether those people are potential offenders or accused or whether they're just witnesses to the conduct because they help explain to an eventual jury what has gone on in this conspiracy or in this RICO case or as this pattern has developed, they have one piece or two pieces of the entire puzzle. You know, these kind of uh, vast investigations are really just like a puzzle that you would put together. And the, and the federal government starts off with a couple of pieces and then a witness here may have another piece. A witness here may have another piece or maybe they have three pieces. And eventually you'll form a mostly intact, though rarely perfect, but mostly intact puzzle and you'll see the full picture. And that's the goal of the investigation. The ongoing federal sex trafficking probe has been likened to another infamous sex trafficking case against financier Jeffrey Epstein. Supposed billionaire who seemed to have been trafficking women uh, in, in plain sight. Like he was engaging in this conduct in plain sight. And I'm not sure that the conduct that Diddy is alleged to have committed was, was similar in that it was in plain sight. This seems very much to have been alleged to be in a much smaller circle. That is, only certain people with these women knew about it. There appear to be far fewer victims, although I expect as the investigation goes along, perhaps we'll, we'll hear about other possible victims. But I think Epstein had a much more flamboyant lifestyle, although the lifestyle of a famous rapper and uh, entrepreneur like Diddy definitely had a more flamboyant lifestyle than, say, you know, a garden variety pimp here in Atlanta who is doing similar things that are alleged, but on a much smaller scale. It was alleged in Cassie's now settled federal lawsuit against Diddy, he would record group sexual encounters, which he would refer to as freak offs. And if the Fed sees any of the contents during the raids, Haig says that could be used as evidence depending on who is seen on any alleged tapes. Recording encounters obviously is fantastic proof, but what is really important in this case is whether there are any underage girls, whether there are any young women or girls who have been involved in this, because that then jumps over into a whole other category of offenses when it comes to uh, recording sexual activity, which could be child pornography under the federal definition. If anyone was under the age of 18, so 17 or under, and any sexual activity of any kind was recorded in the presence of that child or using that child, that is a child pornography offense that can carry as much as a mandatory minimum sentence of 15 years in prison. So those are some of the important reasons why the grand jury, the prosecutors, the investigators are going to be looking hard at digital devices to see if that kind of evidence exists. And while at this time we don't know if Diddy will face any criminal charges or be handed down an indictment, if prosecutors do choose to charge Diddy, they could be facing an uphill battle by prosecuting a famous face with millions upon millions of dollars and a team of lawyers at his disposal. Prosecuting a celebrity has a lot of complications that they just don't have in normal cases. I prosecuted rapper T.I for buying silenced machine guns here in Atlanta about a decade or so ago. And that case was extremely complicated. We had excellent evidence. We had an informant, we had audio recordings. But when we first went into court to try to seek to detain him uh, when he was first arrested, the entire courtroom was filled with people. Normally at a preliminary hearing or a bond hearing, there's nobody in the courtroom but the prosecutors, the defense attorneys, maybe the U.S. Marshals, and that's about it. But this courtroom was literally filled and it was the day after his arrest and people were wearing free TI t-shirts already. So you've got that public pressure because no matter who, almost no matter who the celebrity is, they're gonna have people who support them. It doesn't matter to those supporters what they've done um, or maybe they just refuse to believe it because they think they know the person. 
Maybe they do know the celebrity. So you've got that celebrity factor that you have to worry about from a public standpoint and all the evidence that you're bringing in and making sure your case is really buttoned up tight. And if you're going to, you know, if you're going to shoot at the king, you better not miss, like you've said. So prosecutors have to think about a whole bunch of outside things, not least of which is the uh, sort of the popularity of the celebrity. Uh, how is that going to impact a possible jury? Uh, is the person going to charm a jury no matter what evidence they hear? Are they going to be so excited they're sitting in a courtroom with Diddy or Donald Trump that they're not going to listen to the evidence? All they're going to do is just, you know, sort of gaggle at the, at, at the famous person. I mean, you really do have to worry about those kind of things in a case like this. Diddy himself has remained relatively quiet amid the ongoing federal sex trafficking probe but through a lawyer who's maintained he's innocent. In response to the raids, his lawyer Aaron Dyer called the raids an unprecedented ambush and a gross overuse of military level force. He wrote in part, quote, that it led to a premature rush of judgment and it's nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. He said Diddy is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.